Now, are we recording? Anytime you're ready. That's my thing. Yeah, Mike already. I have two up there ready to go. Good afternoon. I'd like to start by introducing the individuals that are here with me. I am Peter Weir, the District Attorney for the 1st Judicial District, which is Jefferson and Gilpin Counties. To my right is Sarah Ridgway. To my left is Jeremy, the uh, parents of Jessica Ridgway. Standing with me is uh, Chief Deputy District Attorney Hal Sargent, one of the leaders of the prosecution team. Behind him is Chief Deputy District Attorney Dana Easter, one of the other leaders of the prosecution team. Chief Deputy District Attorney Jen Rhodes, also on the trial team. We're also joined by Chief Lee Burke of the Westminster Police Department and Scott Story, former District Attorney who was in fact the District Attorney on October 5th when Jessica was kidnapped uh, and initiated our involvement uh, in the prosecution. Luis Lopez, the lead detective from the Westminster Police Department. Mr. Ron Sloan, who is the uh, executive director of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. And um, Special Agent Mike Rankin of the FBI. Um, Special Agent Rankin is the assistant special agent in charge of our uh, FBI office in Colorado. October 5th. 2012 was a tragic, tragic day. But it started the quest for justice. Justice for Jessica and justice for the individual that committed one of the most horrific crimes in memory. Today, the legal proceedings have been concluded. Mr. Sig has been held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. The sentence imposed is life plus 86 years. We are confident that this sentence ensures that Austin Sig will never ever leave the Department of Institutions and he will never ever be in a position to prey on members of our community. The legal proceedings are over. However, the damage, the hurt, the loss remains. We hope for some closure for families, but at times I think that's a hollow term. The legal process can't solve all the pain, the loss of a beautiful young 10-year-old girl. The sentence imposed today cannot restore the confidence that was lost by our community the day that this man took a young child who was simply walking on her way to school. The sentence today cannot restore the trust in a community. It can't take away that feeling of anxiety that a parent will have when a child is 15 minutes late from returning home, when it's getting dark and your child isn't back yet. These are the things that were taken from us as a community. But there were things that were given to us as a result of this. Speaking on behalf of the prosecution team, we, we do the job because of what we get from members of our community. The love, support, and gratitude of the Ridgeway family has been unbelievable. And it's that support which has allowed us to do the very, very difficult job of effectively prosecuting Austin Sig. It's also a reflection and something we as a community should be proud of with respect to the collaboration cooperation and professionalism of all of our law enforcement agencies. The work of the municipal police departments, the Westminster Police Department, Arvada Police Department, Jeffco Sheriff's Department, 
over 75 agencies that came together for a common purpose, justice for Jessica. The extraordinary efforts on the part of the FBI to assist the investigation. And we cannot say enough about the outstanding, tireless work of the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. Forensic evidence in this, this case was critical. DNA was critical. Ron Sloan and uh, his director of Forensic Laboratories, Jan Gurton, worked tirelessly, 24-7, literally, to compare hundreds and hundreds of DNA samples to identify a perpetrator. It's the result of these, uh, this outstanding teamwork and the support and dedication of the Ridgeway family that has resulted in a successful prosecution. The full weight of the law has come to bear on Austin Sig. It's not enough. More is needed, but it's all we can do. With that, I'll see if there's comments, first of all, by Chief Burke. This is a, a bittersweet day. Um, certainly the judicial process has run its course and uh, we had the best outcome that we could hope for. But nothing we can do will bring back Jessica and it leaves a hole in all of our hearts. Um, I do want to just say that I think the sentence was very appropriate. I've been in law enforcement for almost four years, or excuse me, four decades. And I can say that without a doubt, unequivocally, this case was the most horrific, gruesome, calloused, depraved, any words that you might choose to use, uh, it was truly a reflection of pure evil. And, it, and Austin Sig deserves everything he got. I hope that as much as this conviction and, and sentence can do so that the families and our communities can move on and begin to heal the, the terrible loss that they suffered. The only other thing I would like to say is, echoing the district attorney's comments, we couldn't have done this without the tremendous teamwork, cooperation, and support of our federal and state law enforcement partners and the great work done by the district attorney's office. And finally, I just want to again commend and thank and honor the Ridgeway family. Over the course of the last year, there's been a number of occasions where I had to go to speak to them, and I always struggled with what possibly can you say to a family who has lost a 10-year-old child. Uh, the words were never there. You could never find the right emotions to express. But the thing that I always found amazing is every one of those meetings, I actually walked away from the Ridgeway family strengthened. They strengthened me. And they have been a pillar of strength and hope and positiveness and encouragement uh, that helped us all uh, go forward with this horrible case. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Ron Sloan, Director of CBI. I wish I could be uh, as eloquent as Chief Burke and District Attorney Weir in speaking from the heart, but I had to make some notes um, just to make a comment or two about uh, what we've witnessed today and what we've endured and what this family, uh, Jessica's family, has endured for over a year now. We stand together today really to honor Jessica. This is, this is not so much about the perpetrator, although it is all about the perpetrator having to serve um, a just sentence for the incredibly horrendous crime that he, he committed. Um, it's with a sense of sadness uh, that we know that that's the case, knowing that he ripped a lifetime in front of Jessica filled with possibilities from her and from her family. Uh, I just wanted to, to say that I've been in law enforcement also for over four decades, and this is truly one of the, the most 
uh, horrendous and heinous crimes uh, that have, I have ever witnessed. Uh, it is also uh, one of the most comprehensive law enforcement responses that I've ever seen over the course of my career. Uh, from the entire law enforcement community, uh, from the first officers on the scene uh, when Jessica was reported missing to the officers who banded together uh, over a uh, hundred involved in the task force uh, put together to try to first locate Jessica and then to identify and locate the offender in this case. Uh, it was incredible with the number of law enforcement officers, investigators, scientists and analysts uh, all working hard try to save Jessica's life and then after the uh, painful uh, realization uh, that that was not going to happen to try to identify this offender. And I have to say that uh, those of you who uh, think about scientists that are involved in the forensic evidence in these cases, there's a sense that they're somewhat removed from the trauma of this and that is not the case. I will tell you the hundreds and hundreds of DNA samples that were analyzed and processed by the CBI Forensic Laboratory that the analysts who were involved and the analysts involved in latent print examination and other evidence in this case were all as uh, intimately involved and touched by the cruelty and the heinous nature of this crime. And um, with that being the case, I have to tell you that this, this sentencing today kind of closes the book on a, on a chapter in this whole event. But it's certainly uh, for Jessica's family, I know, uh, for the entire community and for the police officers, scientists, and the prosecutors, the incredible team of prosecutors with the First Judicial District in Pete Weir's District Attorney's Office. We will all be profoundly impacted for the rest of our lives and our careers with Jessica's case and we'll strive to heal um, and we'll never forget the little girl whose life was so violently taken from her on October 5th of last year. Thank you. Thank you, Director Sloan. I'd like to ask um, Mike Rankin of the FBI to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. Weir. So much has been said over the past couple of days. I'll keep my comments very brief. On behalf of the FBI, I again want to say to Jessica's family, I am so sorry for your loss. I also want to thank you, as has been mentioned before, for your strength and your perseverance over the past year. That strength and perseverance has inspired all of us. I'd also like to thank all of our partners. As has been mentioned, 75 law enforcement agencies came together after October 5th to pursue this investigation with all vigor. I'd especially like to thank our partners with the Westminster Police Department, CBI, and the District Attorney's Office for the tremendous job with this investigation and the prosecution. This case is truly one of the most significant illustrations of collaboration I have seen in my law enforcement career. And the leadership demonstrated by Chief Lee Burke and his staff is second to none. Today is a day of some reckoning. Austin Sig is going exactly where he should be going and he'll be there for a very long time. While no one will recover from this, we hope today is also a step forward in the healing process. Healing for Jessica's family, the community, and all of us who have been so profoundly touched by her life and the rally to find justice for Jessica. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I'd like to make one further comment before I introduce the trial team and then we'll hear from uh, Sarah and Jeremy. There have been significant movements by policymakers in the last couple of years to revise our juvenile justice system. Our juvenile justice system is not broken. Our juvenile justice system does remarkable work for young 
people that have made mistakes. The vast majority of those individuals never make it into our system. They are diverted out before they get there. For others, they need the enhanced services that the juvenile system provides, the control by the courts, and the additional services. But there are some individuals that the law characterizes as a juvenile, somebody under the age of 18, that commits crimes that are beyond the pale of a civilized society. For the good of our community, justice demands and public safety demands that they be treated as adults in our criminal justice system. For those who doubt that, you need to look no farther than Austin Sig. With that, I'd like to introduce uh, once again our trial team for their comments. They'll also be subject or uh, available for any questions. Hal, Jen Rhodes, Danny Easter. Yeah, we're full of comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> how about questions? <laughs> how, how did that, how did the plea come about? So can it walk us through, because we're here all set for trial, right? The jury was selected. How did you hear and what did you hear from the conversation itself in this case? Uh, Mr. Onstead, the uh, lead lawyer for the defense, called to say his client wanted to plead guilty to everything. That was it. Were you thankful when you heard those words? And, and can you give us an idea of what that spirit you and <laughs> Jen, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think all of us had. It's a it's a mixed bag. Um, we wanted to do what Sarah and Jessica's family wanted us to do. It's like any event; you prepare for the the race, if you will, and part of you wants to to go forward. But ultimately, no. It, we wanted to do what was right for Jessica for her family, for the case. And so, yeah, and that's, what do you do when someone says they want to plead guilty to everything? Well, you're done. Though, but did he give any reason? Because I mean, you guys had all this months that he could have done it, and he didn't, and you were all set for trial. You know, I think, for me at least, it doesn't matter what Austin Sig says, because there's very little of what he says that I would ever believe. I don't think he's, I think when we use the lens of normal experience to view anything he says or does, we make a great mistake. Uh, I don't think he's someone who cared much about Jessica or her family, but only himself. So it, 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 what he said or thought doesn't, doesn't matter much, at least to me. Was it difficult today? Was it difficult today in court? It was difficult for me to listen to the details. How did you keep it together? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who kept it together? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> and why did you feel so strongly about s such detail in open court? I'm, I'm going to answer the first question and maybe only that one. But uh, what everyone else has said is, is part of it. The reason our, our line of work can be an ugly line of work at times. But where we find, or at least I think we all find, comfort is the people that we meet uh, during, the, during that work. Obviously, we didn't know Jessica, but through those who love her, we got a sense of her, and that's what gets you going every day. Um, yeah, that's it. Mr. Sergeant, uh, Mr. Weir said that perhaps there was something more uh, needed in uh, this sentencing today of life in 96 years. Well, Can you I comment on that? In, in in that regard, what would that perhaps be? Well, first, my boss is always right. <laughs> Second, I'm not sure I know what he meant. <laughs> and third, I'm, I'm very happy with the sentence uh, that, was, that was given. Um, as, as, a, as, yeah, it was as much as the judge could do. Uh, I, I think all of us in the district attorney's office would like to see that Austin Sig, that he dies in prison. I think that's an appropriate sentence. I think this sentence accomplishes that end. Um, that's all. There was a lot of talk. And to clarify. <laughs> 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 
I'm I'm also. Can you clarify it? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify what Mr. Sergeant uh, meant to say. And maybe later. <laughs> I also am uh, uh, very, very pleased with the sentence handed down by Judge Munsinger. I think it was a thoughtful, appropriate sentence. Um, I was making reference to, I wish that our system uh, allowed greater penalties and greater punishment for uh, Austin Sig. Um, he felt the full extent of the law, and that was our goal to begin with. That's what's been accomplished. He's been held fully accountable and the judge imposed an extraordinarily uh, severe and a very, very appropriate sentence. But it's not going to undo all the harm and all the pain that the Ridgeway family and our community has experienced. There was a lot of talk today, this morning, about reasons of why he may have done what he did. I don't believe we probably bought into any of that. But over the course of the last couple of over the course of the last year, has there been any sort of better explanation as to why he may have done this? And does it matter? And should we just sort of leave this case behind and just hope that it was just such an aberration that it will never happen again? Dr. Salter, uh, Anna Salter, Anna Salter, who testified, she also wrote a report. Um, we, taught, we touched on some of what she said in her report. She's a, an internationally known uh, expert who evaluates sexual offenders and other violent offenders. Um, she's interviewed and evaluated the worst of the worst. Um, and I think she would say better than I that we don't know what causes people like Austin Sig to do what he does, uh, other than we know that we can't, as yet, we can't fix them. Um, her opinion, one I share, I think the prosecution team shares, is that uh, he was driven by his own sick desires to he, he's someone who enjoys pain and suffering in other people I can't understand him better I think that's a human a natural human instinct is to to reach for the why to search for an explanation and sometimes there is none other than <clears throat> something is very broken in Austin's sick and it was not something his mother did or didn't do it wasn't the way he was raised. It wasn't what somebody else did or didn't do with or to him. There's something simply broken in him that can't be fixed. And your question, it, at some point, I don't know that it matters because we know what he does. And so with somebody like Austin Sig and others that the legal system has to, has to be able to handle, um, it's not a question of understanding as much as self-protection or protection of the community. And so that's that's the bottom line analysis with an Austin Sig is he needs to be locked away where he can't harm, no matter what causes him to do what he does. To follow up on the second part of the question, we would hope that there aren't other Austin Sigs out there. He clearly is an outlier. He clearly is off the charts when you start trying to uh, project and apply studies to why somebody would do what he did. But I think it's also a cautionary note to our community that there is evil in our community. We have men and women in this office on a daily basis that are prosecuting people that are doing unspeakable things to children, that are doing things to our vulnerable citizens, both the children and our elderly. So it's also to some extent a wake-up call that we all need to be cautious. Uh, we need to be vigilant um, so that we can hopefully prevent uh, folks that have any tendencies to prey on our community uh, from being successful in that. Okay. No, no further questions? Thank you all for being here. Thank you all. Could you just give us your thanks, if you wish, to those who took part in all this and how you feel now that this day has passed? Well, we've pretty much Maybe thanked everybody. Well, we've pretty much thanked everybody personally, so. Okay. Can, 
Can I add one no. thing? Uh, one of the things in, in talking to Sarah and her family that they hope that the community doesn't remember Jessica for how she died, but how she lived. Um, I know that's important to Sarah and her family, and I think that's an important thought to uh, carry forward with. Now, I'm going to cut across here because she really didn't want to speak. So we'll just go ahead and thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. I knew you'd start talking to me. <laughs> but you don't want to, you don't have to. So.